In order to accurately diagnose BPPV and select the appropriate treatment, you have to have a good thorough understanding of nystagmus. And to get that understanding, we're going to be looking at some basic animations here and also some actual videos of real life nystagmus in actual patients. So let's suppose you perform one of the special tests for BPPV, like the Dix Hull Pike maneuver or the horizontal roll test, and now the patient presents with nystagmus. You have to interpret it. Nystagmus will generally have three components. Number one, a linear component. Number two, a torsional component, and that's just rotation. And number three, a duration, which is just the time from the onset of the nystagmus to the time it fatigues or stops. We'll be looking at the interpretation of the duration in the next video, but understand now that it helps differentiate the nature of the displaced autoliths. So is the patient suffering from a canalothiasis or a cupulothiasis? And knowing that dictates the treatment choice. The nystagmus also has two phases or beats. It has a fast beat and it has a slow beat. The fast beat always occurs first, and this is the phase that we care about. This is the one we're going to use in the interpretation. And then after the fast beat, it's going to have a slow beat. So that occurs last, and it's going to return the eyeball to its original position. And to really understand that, let's take a look at the linear component of the nystagmus. Now the linear component of nystagmus can either be vertical or horizontal. What you see here is obviously vertical because it's beating up and down. If it were horizontal, it would be beating left and right. Horizontal nystagmus comes in two types, either geotropic or ageotropic. Don't worry about that right now. We'll be covering that at the end of this video. For now, let's consider vertical nystagmus. Now, vertical nystagmus can either be upbeating or downbeating. So is this vertical nystagmus upbeating or downbeating? To figure that out, we consider the fast beat. Remember, nystagmus has two phases or beats, a fast beat and a slow beat. The fast beat is up, right, and it occurs first. And then there's a slow beat that returns the eyeball to its original position. So while the slow beat is down to return it to its original position, that initial fast beat is up. So this would be upbeating nystagmus. Many times when you're interpreting nystagmus, the patient will actually have a special pair of goggles on that's recording the eyes, and then you're watching one of the eyes in real time on a computer screen. And so simply knowing what you're looking at, orienting yourself with directionality, is extremely important. So this is the patient's left eye. How do I know this? Well, this structure right here is very important as a landmark. This is the caruncle of the left eye. And adjacent to the caruncle over here would actually be the patient's nose. And so if this is the nose, then this would be the patient's left side. So this would be their left eye. And therefore, this would be the left side over here, and this would be the right side over here. So this is upbeating nystagmus. If you look really carefully at the pupil, you'll see a subtle, fast upbeat. Now, of course, there's going to be a slow downbeat that's going to return the eyeball to its original position, but we only care about the fast beat. The fast beat is upward, so this is upbeating nystagmus. This would be downbeating nystagmus. This one's a little easier to see than the previous one, but the fast beat is downwards, and of course there would be a slow upbeat to return the eyeball to its original position, but again, we only care about that fast beat, so this is downbeating nystagmus. Now this clip shows both eyes. The other one didn't, but it's important to know that in BPPV, you might only be seeing one eye on the computer screen, but both eyes should be doing the exact same thing. So even if you're not using the goggles, you really can just look in one of the eyes because the other eye should be doing the same thing. Now, the second component of nystagmus is the torsional component, which is just rotation of the eyeball. Now, when we get to the diagnosis of BPPV, what we're gonna see is that this helps determine the affected side. So is it a left semicircular canal? or is it a right semicircular canal? Now, if the eyeball is truly rotating, then every point here along the circumference of the eyeball is also rotating. But when we're interpreting the torsional component, 
we're specifically using the superior part of the eyeball as a reference point. Now you can use some part of the iris, you can use some part of the sclera, but it's got to be the superior part. If you use the inferior part down here, you'll get the opposite result. Okay? It's got to be the superior part. So what does the torsion look like? Well, it's very similar to the linear component, except it's rotation. It has two beats. It has a fast beat and it has a slow beat. Hopefully you can see that here in the animation. The fast beat occurs first, and it's what we care about. It's what we used in the interpretation of the test. And then there's, of course, a slow beat that occurs afterward, and it helps return the eyeball to its original position. Let's now look at torsional nystagmus in an actual patient. The first step here, though, is to orient ourselves with the picture, or really the movie that we're going to see in real time. This is the patient's right eye. How do I know that? Remember, I look for that landmark, the caruncle. The caruncle of each eye flanks the nose on either side. So the nose would have to be right here. The other caruncle is right here, not shown. And so because the nose is right here, that makes this the patient's right eye. So over here would be the right side. Over here would be the left side. And remember, with interpreting torsion, we're considering the superior part of the eye. It could be the iris or it could be the sclera. So hopefully you see the torsion right there. Is this left torsion or is it right torsion? So take a look at that for a few seconds. So hopefully you were able to see that the fast beat of the torsion was going in the direction of that blue arrow right there. So if we look at the top part of the eyeball, what direction is the torsion? Is it right or left? Well, it's towards the left, so this would be left torsional nystagmus, or it'd be the left torsional component. And again, the left eye, we would expect to be doing the same thing. It should also be undergoing left torsion. Now back to the linear component of nystagmus. When somebody has horizontal nystagmus, we don't say left beating or right beating, as you might expect. What we actually use are the terms geotropic and ageotropic. Now before we get too deep into horizontal nystagmus, here's some important prerequisite information that you need to understand. Horizontal nystagmus in BPPV is assessed using the horizontal roll test or horizontal roll maneuver. In this test, the patient's going to be in supine, so on their back, and their head is rotated either left or right. If their head is rotated left, their left eye is closer to the ground, and the right eye is closer to the ceiling. Conversely, if their head is rotated right, their right eye is closer to the ground and their left eye is closer to the ceiling. And if that doesn't make sense to you, get on your bed or on the floor, on your back, and rotate your head left. Cervical rotation to the left. Your left eye is going to be closer to the ground and your right eye is going to be closer to the ceiling. And you can do the same thing with the right rotation and you should get the opposite result. So horizontal nystagmus comes in one of two types, either geotropic or ageotropic. In geotropic horizontal nystagmus, the fast beat of the nystagmus is toward the ground in both eyes. So to understand this, let's take a look at the movie. So this is the patient's left eye. Again, I know this because the caruncle is over here, so the nose would be even further over here. So this is the patient's left eye. This is the left side of the screen. This is the right side of the screen. Now what you see right here is a clip of what the physician or the physical therapist is actually doing in the test. Currently the patient has the goggles on. Uh, they're in supine on their back, but their head isn't rotated yet. They're looking directly up at the ceiling. Okay, So let's see what happens here. So notice their head was rotated right. Okay. So in right rotation in supine, which eye is closer to the ground? The right eye is closer to the ground. The left eye is closer to the ceiling. So when we talk about geotropic nystagmus, geo means earth or ground. So in geotropic nystagmus, the fast beat of the nystagmus is going to be toward the ground. Okay. The right eye is closer to the ground. So which direction are we going to expect the fast beat to be toward? The right side. And it should do that in both eyes. Let's take a look. So you can easily see the fast beat there. Notice it's to the right. And of course there's that slow beat to return it to the original position. The slow beat would be toward the left. But that fast beat, really good video here, toward the right. 
And because in this position, the right eye is closer to the ground, this would be geotropic nystagmus. Now in ageotropic nystagmus, everything's reversed. And now the fast speed of the nystagmus is towards the ceiling in both eyes. I apologize for that misspelling. We orient ourselves with the picture here. This is the left eye. Again, the caruncle is right over here, so the nose would be even further over here. So this is the left eye. This is the left side, and this is the right side over here. Now up here is showing what the clinician's actually doing, and I care less about the nature of the test. He's technically gonna be doing a Dix Hall Pike maneuver here, uh, but the whole point is you'll see that the patient's head is rotated to the left, okay? Now they're in left cervical rotation. So which eye is closer to the ground? The left eye is closer to the ground and the right eye is closer to the ceiling. Now, if this were geotropic nystagmus, uh, we would see beating towards the left because that's toward the ground and the left eye is closer to the ground. But in ageotropic nystagmus, we're gonna expect the fast beat to be toward the ceiling, which would be toward the right since the right eye is closer to the ceiling. So let's take a look at this. So there's a little bit of a latency there, a delay in other words, but now you start to see a fast beat towards the right. Okay. And again, there's a little bit of a slow beat that returns that eyeball to its original position. But you can see a pretty clear right fast beat. And because in this position the right side is closer to the ceiling, that's away from the ground, this would be ageotropic nystagmus. Now again, we're only looking in one eye here on the screen, and that's okay, because regardless of whether we're dealing with geotropic or ageotropic nystagmus, both eyes are going to do the exact same thing in VPPV. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.